Today in a boot guy, we are looking at the Anchor Comp Toe Square Toe Pull on Wellington from Carolina. Gentlemen, if you love wearing pull-on boots, Wellingtons, whatever you want to call these as much as I do, and you need them for work, the Anchor is going to be one of those boots that you got to try on. You have to find a pair of these in your local shop, or if you're looking for something new, you're going to have to order a pair of these just to test them out and call my bluff on this because I think the boot's comfortable, I think the boot's extremely well made, and I think the boot fits into a whole new market where most of us who wear this kind of boot to work in we're going to feel a lot different about it once we're working in it. So first and foremost, let's start with this sole because I love starting with the sole because it's probably, in my opinion, the most important part of any boot. So it's a hard rubber sole that has an EVA center. So it's sandwiched in there. This super soft material is sandwiched into there. So between the welt, the EVA, the hard rubber sole, what you're getting is you're getting a lot of bounce, a lot of energy return. Now, if you've been wearing pull-on boots for a while, the one thing you might have had is a completely molded type sole where it's a mold injected sole, which is then either welted down or directly attached to your upper. What's going on here, what Carolina did, is they took the really hard material that we've seen on other Wellington brands that make Western style pull-on boots, and they added that compound to the first layer. So this first layer is oil resistant, slip resistant, and when I say that, I mean resistant. It's not oil proof. It isn't like you can go stand in fuel for weeks on end and not have this thing disintegrate because you know fuel destroys every piece of footwear out there if it doesn't destroy the upper it destroys the stitches so yeah it's going to be better in that environment but it's still not going to be the best thing for you the other thing when i say it's slip resistant it means it resists your ability to slip you're still going to slip if you have oil present on a smooth marble surface that's been polished or if you're walking across ice that has water present, you're going to fall flat on your ass. But in a work environment where you come in contact with different types of flooring, the pattern of this sole is going to push away, it's going to squeegee away any of those materials so you're going to have more of a surface to stand on. And because there's not lots of nipples that are present in this boot, there's not lots of little nubs and whatnot like we see in a lot of outdoor boots, we've got a nice smooth surface so it actually will push the water away and give you a quicker surface when you are walking around. All right, so it is a welted boot and that welt is really, really nice. Really, really nice. The thing about that welt is it's a double stitch welt in the front. It is not stitched underneath here at the toe. I consider this to be a weak point, but it's Carolina and Carolina knows what they're doing when they build a boot. So there's got to be a really good reason that they did not stitch the sole all the way through. Because it is a fully welted boot, it means it is resolable. If you fall in love with this thing and you still have support left over in the foot and in the heel, by the time you're done working in it, you can have a brand new sole put on. You could have any kind of sole put on a boot like this. All right, so let's get to that upper. Now that is a beautiful, crazy horse leather. And crazy horse leather, if you're familiar with Carolina, it's one of their main leathers. It's thick, it's heavy. If you're welding, cutting, torching, you want crazy horse leather because of how much oil you can put into this thing and it will not start to ignite because it's a wonderful type of leather. The other thing about this boot, there's, there's not a lot of places for slag to get caught up in this thing in order to start burning or to start igniting. And that's really important, especially welding and grinding because it gives you more of a chance to, I don't know, be comfortable, not worry about this and just worry about your work. So Crazy Horse Leather is some great stuff. Crazy Horse Leather sucks up mink oil. 
you put one coat of make oil on this thing and you're probably gonna be good for about three to four weeks or whatever type of waterproofing compound you choose to put into your boots, it's gonna hold it, it's gonna suck it up. And unless you're in a, an extreme environment where you need to redo it every week, if you're trying to keep metal chips from collecting on your boot or sawdust or whatever, a good brushing, maybe another light coat, and you're fine. Crazy Horse Leather is outstanding stuff. All right, so the comp toe is a carbon composite comp toe. What does that mean? All these fancy big words today in order to say it's a safety boot. Well, carbon composite from Carolina is a lighter weight composite square toe that they can actually engineer to fit the whole platform or shape or there's another big word they're using to describe the, the silhouette of the boot today. It's a wonderful comp toe. It sits a little bit higher, so there's lots of room inside, and it is a nice wide square comp toe. So if you're used to wearing regular work boots and you're moving into a pull-on boot, this is probably a good place for you to start, especially when you need the comp toe because there's gonna be space in there. It's not gonna feel like you're wearing a different style of boot. So like I said before, the one thing I love about this boot is it is EH rated. So it is more along the lines of a boot that I want to wear for my own personal safety. The other thing is with it being EH rated, you get a composite shank. You're not getting a steel shank. So that's probably one of those things that if you're used to wearing a steel shank and you're used to the fluted support that comes from the steel shank, it might feel a little odd at first because it is a piece of fiberglass, if not two, that run from the heel to the forefoot in this boot. You can climb in it, stand in a ladder, stand on a piece of pipe when you're bending, whatever you're doing, it's gonna give you that support but it's not gonna give you the conductivity descending the ground that you're gonna get when you are wearing a boot that has a metal shank. So that's really important. All right, well, let's talk about the scuba liner. Now, you guys out there that have worn Carolinas and you guys out there who have worn them and complained about the scuba liner, it's understandable. Every liner out there, no matter who makes it, what happens, there's gonna be some bad ones out there and you guys really complain on my channel about the scuba liner. Personally, I've owned lots of Carolina boots with scuba liners, never had a problem, never had a pair leak. Though I've had wet feet, my feet have never been wet from water or fuel or anything coolant or anything like that. My feet have been wet from sweat. Scuba liner mixed with a crazy horse leather, guess what, you've got yourself a whole barrier that is not gonna allow transference unless you're in the perfect storm of temperatures and evaporation temperatures and stuff like that. The scuba liner is gonna keep the water out. So when you need to be dry and you need to be out in the rain, in the wet, in the muck for a really long time, a scuba liner is something you can depend on. You guys that complain and say that they leak, the one thing I'd really like to know is if you guys could tell me whether or not they leaked because you were in and out of water, and was it water or was it sweat? Because it really is most of the time just sweat. So scuba liner in this boot is outstanding. All right, so let's talk about the key construction points that I think are important, and that is very few pieces here. There's one solid piece that wraps around. So cutting, welding, torching, like I said, wonderful. In the shaft, the shaft is a little bit wider of a shaft, which is something that I like because it's easy on and off. Super tight heel cup, and I mean super tight heel cup. The thing stays in place. You can jump, you can climb and do whatever you need. The boot did not move around on my foot at all, and I'm really appreciative of that because it's the one thing that I hate is a pull-on boot that starts to slip off your heel when either you're walking, climbing, or getting in and out of a vehicle. Thing stayed on my foot. I loved it. The other thing that's super comfortable is the way they finished off the top. Nice, soft pig skin right at the top. And this material inside, see this orange stuff? It's like a mesh printed type spongy material that is super comfortable. And the thing with 10 inch boots, especially 10 inch work wellingtons, the first time you wear them, they are super uncomfortable right at the top. This thing, I had no problem. I made a mistake the first day, I wore shorter socks than my normal socks, so they kind of stopped right at the top of the boot, and as you know, through the day, your socks kind of slide down. So I had this thing banging into my calf and into my shin all day. 
got home, didn't even notice it, didn't even feel it. It was outstanding. All right, let's talk about size and fit for you guys that are going to be buying these. Something I want to make you guys very much aware of, and that is the insole. So the insole is extremely thick. It's a single density EVA insole with a dry liner on the top of it. And the problem when you put these two together is it takes up a lot of space inside here underneath the comp toe. I can feel they tried to adjust for it, but the first 10 minutes you have these things on, you're gonna feel the comp toe. This thing is a real dense material and it is going to take some time in order to break it down and get it to kind of feel I don't know, soft or just take on the shape of your foot. Like you've seen in other videos when I pulled the insole out after I've worn them for three or four weeks, you can see the imprint of my foot. This one I've worn for a total of 10 days now and no imprint yet. So this is gonna take a while for that to happen. So something that I did about the size and fit on this thing is I took the insole out on the second day and I walked around with a really thick pair of hunting socks inside here. I don't suggest it, but I needed to test it out. And you know what? because of the way they build the sole with that EVA cushion right there in the middle in the wedge and in the forefoot, it was comfortable, it was great, and it actually helped improve the breaking in period for that day of this boot. So size and fit, guys, if you know your size and pull on boots, you buy your size. If you've never worn pull on boots before and you're going to order them, you gotta order a size above your regular size or a half size above and your size because you might hit it lucky and you might actually have been buying the wrong size boots so your regular size is gonna work. But if you know your size, definitely a half size bigger just so you can kind of play in that safety spot where you're gonna be comfortable and you're gonna have enough room all the way around. So that's the Carolina Anchor Comp Toe Pull-On Waterproof Wellington that is super comfortable. Hey guys, if you're wearing anything from Carolina when it comes to the Wellington Pull-On boots that they make, please comment below and let guys know what you think about it. If you're wearing anything with this rubber sole, also comment below and let guys know how it works out for you and the type of work you're doing with this sole. If you're working around fuel, please comment below and just let guys understand exactly what happens when you work around fuel with boots like this or boots that aren't made of this caliber or quality and how quickly they fall apart. Gentlemen, if you're interested, swing by my Instagram page. I have all kinds of photos from the last 10 days of wearing these things around in all kinds of situations. And also I have other stuff that is coming to the Boot Guy Reviews that's gonna be reviewed later. And also that is a good place for you guys to get in contact with me if you think that I really need to review a boot that you're really interested in. So you're enjoying the Boot Guy Reviews channel, you're enjoying my videos, do me a favor. Click that link below, that buy me a beer or buy me a cup of coffee button. Send me a few bucks. Let me know how appreciative you are of all the work I put into this channel and all the work I put into these reviews. Buy me a beer or buy me a cup of coffee to show your love. 
hey, if you're about to pick up a pair of these and you just can't find the information you're looking for out there on the net using the old Google, think, think about sending me a direct message through Instagram. Though it might take me a day or two to answer your question, I'm still gonna answer it because I'm still gonna see it because I'm on Instagram all the time. All right, until the next time, I'm the Boot Guy. Thanks a lot for watching.